Hello everyone, welcome back. Based on my last survey on building basic techniques before moving on to more advanced techniques, here is my follow-up video. So we'll start with basic navigation. If you hold down the control key, you can move around your build plate. So control one will give us a top view. Control two, bottom view. Control three, south side, and this is the side that you're facing your printer on. Control four will give us north side, so this is the back of the printer. Control five, west side, so this is the side that is facing your auxiliary cooling fan. Control six is the east side. Control seven will give us an isometric view. Control eight and nine, I won't do anything, but control zero will give us the uh, similar isometric view, but just pulled back a little bit. Okay, so let's talk about walls, uh, floors, and ceilings. Usually they're expressed as loops. So if we select one of these cubes, I made a few of these with uh, different states. So starting with this one, it's our standard two walls, has a 15% infill and uh, a top and bottom layer. This particular one, I've made three walls and that's three loops. And this also will have a top and bottom layer and a normal infill, 15%. This particular one, I will set up with, again, three walls, but we're actually just gonna take out the infill this particular one, I will actually have it where there is no top shell and no infill. And this last one, I will actually take out the um, two walls. We won't have a top layer, bottom layer, or infill. And I will slice this. So this right here would be your standard box. So if I go down a few layers, standard box. This particular one, what I've done is I actually added three layers versus two. So this is one way you can add rigidity before you even get to your infill. This particular one, no infill, but I gave it a top, so it's just an empty box. This particular one, I took the top off, so you effectively can make an empty box without having to create a negative um, part. And this particular one, I actually have no top and no bottom. So you can actually do a few things with this. So you can um, manipulate models by taking out walls, adding walls, and of course adding uh, either bigger infill or taking out infill altogether. So I just wanna make sure that you had just a basic understanding of what I'm doing before we go into other projects. Okay, so this is your crash course into the cut tool. So if you select any model, you can then go up to the top here, or you can just hit the C key and you'll go into the cut. Now with cut, you can bifurcate any of your models. So this cut plane can be moved a few different ways. You can essentially move it up and down. You can adjust any particular angle you want. And let's go and reset that. And if you, again, wanted a simple cut, you could just perform the cut. Now, make sure that if you do want to keep these, these are checked off. So if you um, tell it to not keep a particular part, that means you're cutting it and you're discarding it. So just make sure that uh, if you do want to keep it, you uh, keep these checked. So perform cut, pretty straightforward. This is pretty good for spheres because you can actually, printing this doesn't give enough surface area, so it probably will, will fail. So you can actually flip these around so you can print on the flat side or the side that has more surface area. So pretty straightforward. All right, on to the next shape. Now, if we were to again go back to cut, you'll have some options. So the cut tool will allow you to add connectors and those connectors will let you realign the things that you've cut. So if you're gluing it or, or reassembling it uh, in real world terms, it makes it a whole lot easier to just add connectors. So we will hit connectors and you'll have a few options. We're actually gonna start with the plug. Now within the plug, you can choose your style. So the style is effectively a prism or frustum. And if we were to just click on one of these, 
you've uh, effectively created a little uh, connector piece. And this will print like this. And if I click and hold and drag up, you'll see the adjoining side and the hole that it creates. So you can realign these things. So if it's coming out um, at a wrong angle, you can just adjust these to where you can reassemble it. So if I were to go in, um, confirm the connector, and then perform the cut, this will print just like this, and on the other side will print like this. Now let's go back a few steps. Now going back to the edit connectors, if you don't make any changes uh, to the following section, so if we go look into our depth ratio, that's how far it will um, extend down and extend up. If we don't make any adjustments to the tolerances, it's a press fit. Uh, you have to be careful because sometimes your filament will expand a bit and it might be difficult, so you may have to play around with your tolerances. And when you're selecting these, Right now we're just doing um, hard shapes. So we have the triangle, square, hexagon, and circle, or pretty much a cylinder. Uh, let's click on these. And again, you can choose how far it will extend into the uh, other side and of course into here. If we were to choose a frustum, you can choose the following shapes. And these can kind of be a little more forgiving depending on which one you select. Again, same idea, you can realign it and you can pretty much add as many as will fit. Now, I don't always like to use these because again, if you made a mistake where you've printed the entire thing and your tolerances are off, uh, you're gonna have a bad time. So you can always try to like file it down if it doesn't fit, uh, but there's another option. Let's reset these connectors, and we're going to go into the dowels. So the dowels will effectively create pegs that you can um, you can add to the model through this part, and then you can print them, and you can make some adjustments later. So same idea. You would just uh, choose the place that you want to put your um, your dowel. The next part is you select your style. Again, you can click and hold. You can drag up. You can place down as many as you want, and of course you can control the connector, the depth ratio, et cetera, the size. And then when you confirm your connectors and perform your cut, you will have cut side, the other cut side, and you can actually flip these as well. So flip, that's the other side. And the nice part about this is you can print these separately and you can adjust them. So these, these are really good in terms of if it doesn't fit properly, you can drop it down another, um, like a few percentage points, or you can actually just make some adjustments. Um, you can make adjustments to these, but you wanna clone them first. So if you uh, try to make an adjustment here and enlarge, it selects all of them. So what you would do in that case is just find one you wanna make a change to, make a clone. And now what you can do is you can actually make your adjustments. So if you need to lower something a few percentage points, you can certainly do that. And you can iterate and create several different types, whichever one makes a better fit. All right, and the last one, probably not as important, but it's a neat little thing. Uh, this is actually a throwback from uh, Prusa Slicer. So if you're trying to cut something, if you were to go to your cut tool, uh, one thing that you can do is you can actually just uh, select any angle you want. So instead of doing an adjustment here, if you hold down the shift key, hold down shift, drag across the part where you want to make the cut, let go, and now um, I'll just do a quick perform cut. It'll cut it at the angle that you did that slice. So let's say that you have a model that does not fit on your build plate. Let's say something like this. The cut tool will be your best friend. So if you were to select your model, hit the cut tool, now again, the cut tool will usually find the midway point. And for something like this, it's well beyond the build plane, so we'll have to lower it. So find a spot that makes sense to you. I usually like to make the cuts around places that can be hidden. So uh, your models obviously will vary. We would then hit add connector. Now this guy has a hole in it because I, um, I printed this last year 
and I set it up so I can shove a metal rod through this, but let's pretend that wasn't there. And you could then just do a dowel or a plug, and you'd, from there you'll just select what you want. We will make the size bigger, nothing crazy. This will help with alignment, and of course you can control um, how deep it will go in without, of course, sticking out the end. Actually, I won't make too many adjustments here. All right, so once that's done, again, you can sort of bring this up to see how it connects on the other end, confirm your connector, perform your cut. And you would do this as many times as you need to make sure everything will fit on the plate. So again, let's go to cut. This would help if I hit the right size or side. Uh, cut, it goes to your midway point. Find the part that makes sense. We're gonna bring this down. Form cut. I'm not gonna add any pegs uh, because I actually won't be reprinting this. It takes a long time to print, but this will give us an idea on how you can print something that is well beyond your build plate or something that is difficult to print. So we'll perform cut and we'll just do that a few more times. Again, click out, click in, go down to here, form cut. And that one, you can probably get away. I'll probably make another cut. There's, there's a way where you can sort of break this entire thing down so you can get it done in pretty much one print. But of course, something like this, I would have to cut the other one. But you get the idea. So that is, again, your crash course on the cut tool. And if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments. So we're going to be building off of some of these basic techniques for some of our other projects. I'll probably do something like this uh, if I ever go over something, um, a project that I have not discussed this uh, in depth, uh, just to sort of get everyone caught up. And with that, thank you very much for watching.